Hi everyone, my name is Effie Andrikopoulou. I'm a cardiologist with the University of Washington and I'm a specialist with cardiovascular imaging and cardio-oncology. The latter means a specific subfield of cardiology that focuses on caring for people who are either actively undergoing treatments for their cancer or who are survivors of different types of cancer. There are lots of different ways that uh, different types of cancers themselves and importantly different types of treatments for cancer and that includes different types of chemotherapy, radiation treatment, immunotherapy and cell-based therapies like CAR T cell therapy can affect the heart and the vessels and by that we mean risk of development or development of heart disease like heart failure, which is weakness or stiffness of the heart muscle. That could mean buildup of cholesterol plaques in the vessels of, of the heart and other parts of our body, like the brain or our legs and belly, that over time could lead to things like heart attacks or strokes. Different types of treatment can put us at higher risk of, for developing high blood pressure or high cholesterol or different types of abnormal heart rhythms like atrial fibrillation or extra heartbeats. Echocardiograms are one of the workhorse of testing that we do. We do a lot of echocardiograms as well as a lot of electrocardiograms. The echocardiogram is meant to look at the pumping and the stiffness of the left side of the heart muscle and the pumping of the right side of the heart muscle. And it's also meant to help us understand if all of the uh, valves inside the heart are opening and closing well, if there's any evidence of fluid that starts building up in our body that can over time make us short of breath or cause our legs to get swollen. So lots of uh, very helpful information from the echocardiogram. The first thing that I will say is there is no amount of medications that any cardiologist or other doctor can give that will ever substitute for those three things. Number one is a heart healthy diet. And by that we mean the Mediterranean type of diet, also called DASH, D-A-S-H. There's tons of free information online on it from meal planning, grocery store lists, recipes. That's number one. Number two is uh, exercise. It's very, very important to stay as active as it's realistic for us. Uh, like I said, it's very important to feel and listen to our bodies. Not every day is going to be the same. Some days will be better than others. And different stages during someone's journey are going to be different. It will be different when we're actively getting treatment for cancer and we might be weak, have low energy, not be in a good mood or experience side effects. It will be different if we've just had a type, any type of surgery or radiation for our cancer and different in different stages of our survivorship journey, early on in survivorship versus later on. But it's important to try, try as much as we can and as much as realistic to stay active, even if that means doing a couple of reps with some light weights when we watch TV that's still great. It's still better. Anything is better than zero. And third important tip is surround yourself with a strong support system, your family, your friends, your loved ones, that can give you with emotional and mental support to get you through this, through this path. It takes a village, it takes a lot of people to build on your corner, but everyone, we're all on the same team, which is team you, our patient. And it, it takes a healthy diet, exercise, and a healthy brain and soul for us and a healthy mood to, to be as healthy as we can. I would like to say one thing that I mentioned during my talks to all, to all of us is that we are ourselves biggest advocates for our heart health. Please never, never hesitate to reach out to your doctor and your nurse and talk to them and ask them, hey, is there anything that I can do? Can you think of any advice and tips for me to stay as, as healthy as I can for my heart now and in the long run. Or you can ask questions like, hey, do you think uh, any of the treatments that I went through could put me at risk of developing any type of heart disease or high blood pressure or any type of abnormal heart rhythm? And do you think I, I should see a cardiologist for this? Please never hesitate to talk to us. We love seeing our uh, patients and their caregivers and their support system engaged and invest in your health. This gives us a lot of energy too.